Right boys, welcome back to the channel. First video of 2022. Today we are looking at the January transfer window. I've come up with 20 signings, one signing per Premier League club. I've banged them into the game and let's see how they get on. Now, I think all of them are pretty realistic-ish and deals that could be done. What I want you to do down in the comments is let me know who you would like to see at your football club in January. It doesn't have to be Premier League, anywhere in the world. Only one signing though. Let me know down in the comments who you want at your club this new year. All right, let's get into today's video. Smash a like on it, be much appreciated. We talk about this a lot in the live streams about transfers and stuff. My live streams are moving over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash trekfm. Links down in the description. Go and give me a follow. That would be bloody lovely. All right, here we go. First club, we're going to do it alphabetical order. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. The first one is a little bit of a heartbreaker. All right, so here we are. I have given Arsenal Dusan Flavovic. Now, a couple of reasons. I think there is a deal to be done this January for him, mainly because he's got 18 months left on his deal. You're going to get more for him now than what you probably would in the summer. So there's number one. Number two, he's not signing a new contract, wants to leave. Number three, he's fucking outstanding. Um, probably my favourite player in Europe at the moment. And even though I hate Arsenal and would love to see him at United, um, I just think that's the position they're missing. They've, they've got Lacazette probably leaving at the end of the season. Aubameyang, gone. Probably won't even play for the club again if they can get rid of him. Balogun, not ready. And Eddie and Ketty are leaving as well in the summer. So they need a striker. And all this about, oh, well, they can just do a nice fluent front three with Martinelli. Martinelli has a nasty habit of picking up injuries. And I don't see there's a lot of goals in that. This guy fits the profile. Young hungry kind of the squad that Mikel Arteta is wanting to it's the type of player sorry that Mikel Arteta is wanting to bring to the Arsenal I cannot he wouldn't be the missing piece of the jigsaw there's a lot of work still to be done at Arsenal especially to get him onto that next level and get him into that sort of like top three top four but he would be an absolute massive signing for the Arsenal this January all right Aston Villa I've given him Jesse Lingard now Obviously, Jesse's going to want to leave. I'm not sure whether I've given West Ham another option. I think the easy option was to send them straight to West, to send him to West Ham. But I think West Ham really, and if they're going to strengthen somewhere, need to strengthen somewhere else. And I just found Aston Villa this year a little bit flat without Grealish. The signings they've made, Leon Bailey, has been a little bit in and out. Buendia has not quite hit it off just yet. And I just maybe thought alone to the end of the season see where he's at, wouldn't be a bad deal to be at. I've, I've obviously put him as a permanent deal, but I think they'll be alone to the end of the season for Jesse Lingard at Aston Villa. Wouldn't be a bad shout. Um, this one was one of the more difficult ones. I've found some some teams easier to fill than others. Um, so Jesse Lingard at Aston Villa. I thought he was too good for a Southampton. Not quite sure, perhaps an Everton, but then once again, I thought they would need to strengthen elsewhere. It's definitely a deal that I think could potentially happen, especially if Man United make him available for a loan. Right, on to Brighton. This one's a bit of an outward one. I I think they need goals. That's what I kind of thought. I thought um, even Tony's done well. Um, Embuemo has done quite well. I think there's only the two of them really at the moment for, for Brentford. I just thought they'd maybe down the road, they need to score goals. They only sign certain players with certain profiles. So I thought him coming across from Switzerland, having the potential then to sell on to an even bigger club. I think the jump, there's been links for him going to Barcelona, but I think the, the link for him to go from um, Basel, uh, Basel in Switzerland to Barcelona is way too big. They'll want a little bit of money for him as well. And obviously with Barcelona signing Torres, I think that was maybe him and his agent maybe muting for a move more than the other way around. So I've gone for Arthur Cabral. I, he's had a fantastic, he's already scored a number of goals this season. I can't remember at the top of my head. He's had two really good after a loan spell and then 2.6 million. I think if Brentford went in with a 20, 25 million pound, I think that's money they potentially have. He would no doubt score goals at the Premier League, would probably work well in a front two. They'll Brent, Brentford like to go with a front two, so I think he would work well up there with, with even Tony. And I just give Brentford a little bit more of a goal threat. I think the only thing that may pull Brentford back into the relegation area is that they don't score enough goals. And I think signing him this January would definitely be the answer. And then talking of strikers, I've put Ben Bereton diaz at Brighton. Brighton are in desperate need, even though Danny Welbeck scored a goal at the weekend. Mope is kind of in and out, but I think he'd, once again, he sometimes likes to go with the front two or a, or a second striker. I think Ben Bereton diaz could do this. He's already scored 20 goals in the championship. A lot of buzz around him at the moment. I don't necessarily think the way Blackburn have been going over the last sort of like two months, it would take a big a big amount of money to get him away from there just because they're pushing for promotion to the Premier League. But 
I would still class Blackburn as a selling club. And I think if the right deal came in, I think he would definitely want to move into Brighton, into the Premier League, a good club. And I think he fits the profile, a sort of player that Brighton would like to bring in. Right. Um, Burnley was a bit of a struggle and I've gone for my main man, Vedat Marucci. Um, I kind of thought, you know, they've got enough in the wide areas with Max Corne, uh, McNeil, Good John, is it Good Goodmanson? And then I just thought it's maybe getting a little bit flat up front. And Vedat Marucci signed for Lazio 18 months ago, has basically hardly ever played. And I just thought he fits the profile perfectly. Six foot four, absolute beast, balls into the box, probably an upgrade on Ashley Barnes and um, Chris Wood as well. And yeah. We've gone for it. A bit of a wild card, but I'm excited to see how many goals he would bang in in the Premier League. Chelsea have gone for Jules Kunde. Now, the reason that I haven't gone for a wing-back is that I'm going to think left wing-back because obviously Chilwell's injury. I think it's going to be very hard for Chelsea to sign someone, potentially Luka Dean on loan, but then would he want to go there knowing that, you know, when Chilwell comes back, that he's going to be out. You know, he could even be third choice. They've got a decent backup in Alonso. They've also got Emerson to call back. I just thought... You know, with the players potentially that Chelsea are going to lose in Rudiger, Aspilicueta and Christiansen, I think, is all out of contract in the summer. I just thought having to replace three centre-halves, maybe even four centre-halves, depending on what Thiago Silva does in the summer. Obviously, he's at the edge of what would be 36, 37. I just thought getting Jules Kunde in now, a player that they've tracked for a long time, they know how much they need to pay for him. Getting him in now and playing him for six months, bedding him in and then going again in the summer when they're probably going to need to pick up another two centre-halves, I thought would have been a smart move this winter for Chelsea. Um, as I said, we could have gone with a left wing back, but I just think them signing someone doesn't make much sense when they'll get Chilwell back. They could probably get by and call on Emerson. Reese James played out there until he got injured. Um, Hudson Doyle's played as wing backs before. Um, so yeah, there's there's options there without having to go and spend money on a on a temporary solution for him. Right, Crystal Palace, uh, they're going to welcome back Aaron Wan Bissaka. He's just not as much as we as a United fan we enjoyed him in the sort of like the first season with his the way he's defended, um, but just going forward he's just he's just not good enough and to be at that top top level. And I think Crystal Palace need a right back. I think they've got Martin Kelly and Nathaniel Klein. I think has been playing there more. He's obviously come from Palace, and I thought yeah this is something that it will never happen. But I think down potentially down the road I think. Wambasaka is not a top six fullback. I think he's that middle level Everton, Palace, Southampton, um, Aston Villa kind of level. And I think him going back to Palace, they need a right back. I thought it would be a sensible move. Maybe not happen in January, but I think Man United, if they can get a deal done this winter for a midfielder, I think they'll they'll hunt for a right back. In particular, because Aaron Wambasaka is not good going enough forward, good good enough going forward, and Dolot has had his opportunities over the last few weeks and has not played very. Well, right, Everton, I've gone for Ryan Nyambi from Blackburn. Uh, I think the problem with Everton is they've had too many injuries. I think once everybody's back and Richarlison's back, Dominic Calvert-Lewin's back, Dakari was back, um, Alan in the central midfield, they've got Townsend and Gray. Uh, without, I think going forward, they probably need a number 10, someone who can play in the number 10 role if he goes down the, down the route of maybe a 4-2-3-1 a, a or something like that. Um, they need strength at right back in particular. I know they've strengthened at the left back with a, the Ukrainian left back. Um, Seamus, Seamus Coleman is now well past his best. And I just thought this was an option. He's he's not going to travel far because he's coming from Blackburn. Young. He is born in England. Yeah, born in Manchester. Even though now he's had six caps for Nambia. So I just thought it was a really good solution. He's a really good championship player. Really solid. Not amazing going forward. But once again... Uh, Rafa Benitez is not overly keen on having his fullbacks fly, flying forward. So, tremendous physicals in the game. A player that I always look out for when I'm doing an English save. Someone that I think if he could improve his technicals a little bit. He's 23, so maybe you're not going to get much out of him. But he is going to get a move to the Premier League, I think. Maybe not in January, but definitely in summer. But I just thought that would be something that a deal that could potentially be done. Right, on to Leeds, and I've gone one of my favourite players from Liga, Seco Fafana. Uh, he plays for my French team, Lens, has had a really good use of couple of seasons. He's only, well, a season and a half. Um, £9 million from Lens. I think they're going to have to spend like over £20 million. Central midfielder, I just find that with the backup of Phillips in there, and then him in there with like a click, I think because of Leeds' injuries, um, and also players sort of like Rodrigo playing in attacking central areas, this guy on his day has it all. He's a little bit of a mix of sort of like Paul Pogba and Yaya Torre. He kind of gets into these left half spaces. If you go check out his heat map 
I'll put a little picture up now actually, he's heat map at sofa score. He loves to get in these left little channels. Very good dribbler, very aggressive, gets in the box, scores goals. Um, obviously his physicals there, six foot one, his physicals are very good. Um, kind of a bit of a box to box midfielder. I think he would be ideal at Leeds United. Right, Leicester City, I have gone for Sven Botman. Now, I think he, even though they've already listed him for loan, that's a promising side. Um, very good defender, was sort of like muted to join one of the big boys in the summer. And I think because Lille won the league and obviously he perhaps maybe wanted to stay and give it a go, playing the Champions League with Lille. Uh, a move never happened, but now because they're really struggling, they will need money because money is very tight, I think, still at Lille. Sven Botman, you know, they've got Johnny Evans, who's coming to the end of his career for Fana, is out injured at the moment. Um, also, Soyunku's who's played quite poorly. Vestergaard's there, but not done quite well. So I think, even though, obviously, Leicester, by the looks of it, are not going to use him this season in the game, I think that would be a really good signing for Leicester. I think he's kind of missed the boat on one of the big European clubs. So the next next tier down, sort of like Leicester. I think Leicester do need to strengthen at centre-half. Liverpool, uh, this one hurts a little bit as well, because um, I hate Liverpool, obviously. Um, and I love Frank Kessie, but I just think he's just ideal for what Liverpool need. He likes... Obviously, Jurgen Klopp doesn't go with a classic 10. He likes players in the middle of the park that can get about the pitch and break things up and be aggressive. He can do that, but he can also play with the ball at his feet. He will score goals. I think Liverpool lack that. The amount of goals they score from that central area isn't good, especially when, since when aldum has gone as well. I think the midfield definitely needs a little bit of work with Milner, Fabinho, um, Kaita's not quite doing it yet, is he? Henderson. So I think he... With six months left on his deal, I think if they put in a nice cheeky 10, 15 million pound bid, I think they could get him early because in the summer when he's available on a three, I think everyone will go for him. Now, Spurs have been linked to him, but I just think Liverpool, he fits Liverpool rather nicely. If there's any Liverpool fans watching, let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Right, Man City, I've gone for Lucas Dinier. Now, Something's happened with him at Rafa Benite with Everton at Rafa with Rafa Benitez. So number one, it looks like there's a, there's a deal to be done, and obviously there was that link with Chelsea. But I think we're kind of just putting two and two together because they've got injury worries at the moment. But I think a deal for him would be good. He's exceptional at getting forward. He would offer great width on that left hand side. You know they've been playing Cancelo out there a little bit. Zinchenko, Nathan Ake played there the other day, and I just think you know are they going to sign a striker this winter? No, probably not. Are they going to do it in the summer? Potentially. Where's the other area that needs strengthening in the team? And you would have to say it's left back. And while he's available, I think he would be a perfect pickup for them. I think if, especially because they went big in the summer for Greedy, to they go big in the summer for a Kane or a Haaland, they're not to meet sort of like FFP rules and stuff. They're maybe not going to be able to go for a 50, 60 million pound fullback. He's unhappy. He lives local. Perfect signing for me, I think, for Manchester City. And that would definitely make them, unfortunately, even more stronger for the rest of the season. Right, on to the Reds. I've gone for Amadou Haidara. Now, I'm not absolutely ecstatic with the signing of this. We definitely need a central midfielder. We need a central midfielder now to get us through the second half of the season. So my thought is... If he's wanting to play, Ralph Rennie wanting to play sort of like the 4 2 2 2 2, while we play with two sort of like a double pivot, him alongside a Rice in the summer or him alongside a Calvin Phillips in the summer would be absolutely perfect. I think he's got a minimum release clause of 34 million. Um, so a deal probably could be done this uh, January. I think they're going to sign somebody. If they're going to sign anybody, I'd, I'd like another central midfielder. He gets about the pitch, he breaks things up. He can also carry the ball as well. Very energetic. I think Man United fans would love him if we could get him in in January. Right, Newcastle. This was one of the tough ones just because Newcastle basically need, I think they need a keeper. They need two new fullbacks. They need a centre half, which I've picked up here. They need probably a central midfielder and they need a striker. Um, and maybe even another attacking player, uh, like a winger. So there's a lot of work to be done. I had to pick one. Um, now, Callum Wilson's injured, but I'd kind of made this, sort of like done these choices before Callum Wilson got injured the other night. But I just think where they're most struggling is at the back. At the back, they're terrible. Who are they most likely going to pick up? Will they go for a Sven Botman? People have they've been linked to him, but I just thought James Tarkowski, I think his contract's out at the end of the season as well. So it would make sense to get someone like him in Premier League experience just to try and help keep clean sheets. I think him and Lascelles wouldn't be a bad partnership, potentially. Look, they need a lot more work. They need a lot more signings. Signing James Tarkowski is, is not going to be enough for Newcastle, but it would be a start. Um, let me know your thoughts down below. All you 
lads that have sort of like done Newcastle saves and stuff. If you had to sign one player for Newcastle this winter, this January, who would it be? Right, I'm going to be honest, I balls this one up. Um, Norwich was very difficult. I'd, I've watched this lad play a few times uh, for Udinese and highlight packages and stuff in the City A. And he's a bit of a handful. And I thought, how are Norwich going to get out of the trouble that they're in? They're not going to keep clean sheets. I think there's too much reliance on Pukki. So to have someone up there who's going to cause problems and just free uh, Pukki up a little bit would be an option. So I've gone for Beto, who is on loan from Portimonus. Yeah, he was Portimonense. He was supposed to be at Udinese on loan, and I just thought it was a loan. But it turns out in the game, he's joining them. So Norwich probably won't be able to sign him. But maybe if a player that fits this profile, if you have any other ideas of a player that would fit this profile, I just thought that he's... He's quite quick, he's strong, he's very raw. Um, ball bounces off his shins and not, but he would cause havoc, I think, in the Premier League for a little bit, and it would just free Pookie up. Um, look, they're not going to sign an amazing number 10 to work off him. I just thought maybe just going for a bit of blood and guts might just save Norwich this season. Southampton. Now, I was looking at perhaps another number 10 because of the 4 2 2 I think they do lack a little bit of creativity into them two sort of like wider 10 positions, but just finished January with... I think at one point, Fraser and McCarthy were both injured. I think both are coming up to be out of contracts. Both not great. They've two done for. I think when you swap and change between your keepers and no one's a standout, I think that's a problem. Sam Johnson's contract with West Brom is done at the end of the season. Looks like he's not wanting to sign a new contract. Getting an England international in, in his peak of his years at 28, I think would be a good signing. I think it's a realistic signing, a signing that you could see happening this January. Right, we're moving on to one of my other favourite players, and it's Nikola Milenkovic. I think he would be ideal at Spurs. Now, there's a little bit of link into, you know, going out and trying to get another right wing back this summer, uh, sorry, this January, even though they've just signed Emerson Royal, but I think they're still weakest in these centre-half areas when you've got Romero, Dyer, Tanganga, Sanchez, Ben Davies, who is probably a left back and will need to probably play at left back a little bit, sorry, at left wing back at some point. They need to strengthen in these areas. They've got plenty of midfielders. They're not going to sign a striker. So having someone like him, potentially, I think I think if Flavovic goes, Milenkovic will stay. But if Flavovic stays, Milenkovic could be an option. So terrific, terrific, terrific not Harry Renner, fantastic defender. Um, decent with the ball at his feet. Could probably play right side to centre half as well with Dyer in the middle and Romero on the other side. Um, yeah, really good player. Would probably cost maybe 30, 40 million, but it would be 30, 40 million well spent. Right, Watford, I've gone for Nathan Phillips. He wants to leave Liverpool. He wants to play some regular football by the sounds of it. Um, they need a centre half. They always go for shit foreigners, don't they? Um, the amount of sort of like average defenders Watford might need to generally sign is amazing. And I think he would do a decent job. I think he's available. They'd maybe get a loan deal done for him. He played, what, 17 times last season, but because of the injuries, Liverpool uh, defenders, he obviously got a lot of game time, hardly any game time this year. I think he's already played a couple of games. Definitely one in a move by the sounds of it, and I think he would be a good option. He's English, he's Premier League experience, which normally doesn't stand well for modern-day Watford. You know, they've got a load of other players in here that can sort of like play centre-half, but if they've got loads of central midfielders. They've played people like Sissoko and Ken Semmer, Two fans there, Atebo, uh, Kuka's there. Going forward, they've got King, Dennis, Hernandez, uh, Ashley, Fletcher, Sa as well. So do they need players in attacking areas? Probably not. So I just thought, centre-half, Premier League experience, wants to leave, fits the bill, Nathan Phillips. Right, moving on to West Ham, and it is Velotti. I think the new another striker. Someone who's probably missed that boat now of a really a top-tier Premier League club. West Ham are doing really well. In Europe, only got Michel Antonio. I think they'll look they look light sometimes when he's not playing. I also think Michel Antonio plays well when they need to counter against teams. He's more of a penalty box striker, and I think when West Ham are playing against teams with a lower block, he would be perfect in and around the penalty area, scoring goals, light on the workload. And Antonio Antonio could even go out to the right as well in a bit of a squad rotation. You know, we could have said Jesse Lingard is the obvious choice, but they've got enough players in attacking areas, sort of like in the tens and the wide areas. What they think they need is someone to really push Antonio um, and give him a rest, especially when they're fighting for Champions League football this year again and in the last stages of Europe. They'll probably want to go far in it, potential to go far in it, and a player like him scoring a few important goals in the second half of the season could be the signing of the 
window. Right, and then finally moving on to Wolves, we've gone for Ronaldo Sanchez. Now initially I did put Fafana, who I've put at Leeds, at Wolves because I think they're crying out for a central midfielder um, who can just drive with the ball. Obviously they've got decent players in terms of Traore, um, who can carry the ball, Trincao can carry the ball in wide areas. They're not going to necessarily probably go and sign another number nine because they've got Silva as a backup. And um, obviously they've got Raul Jimenez. I just think in midfield, they're not as if they lack quality, but if they're going to play like a 3-5-2, having someone like Renato San Sanchez able to get on the ball and drive with it, I think would be, I think a big link to what Wolves are missing. I think they're missing, obviously they get the occasional goal from uh, Neves, but it's normally a free kick or a bit of a worldie. Having someone who can get into the penalty area of runs, getting on the end of things, he would be the answer. It's maybe a little bit too obvious because I think he's even George Mendes. He might even be a George Mendes player. But because he's at Lille, once again, they're looking to sell players this January. Portuguese, Fitzgerald. It's maybe classed as a lazy signing um, on my behalf. But I think it's definitely something that could happen. All right, so they are the 20 signings. Let's go and see if any of them have done the business. I've simulated one season. Let's see if any of them have done the business in the Premier League. Right, there we are. There is the league table. Liverpool shock champions, 91 points. Uh, any team's done badly. Tottenham have done badly with Conte in charge. Brentford finished bottom. Norwich and Watford, three teams that came up, are all going back down. Wolves hang on by the skin of their teeth. Any decent seasons in there? Everton, I suppose, had a decent season. Leicester have had a good season. Um, but let's go and see if there's any of the players that I've chose for him have actually done any good. Dusan Flavovic has only scored 12 goals in 33 games. I expected more from him. I'm hoping to sign him in my Manchester United Let's Play, which starts tomorrow night, by the way. DNA Manchester United. Um, so hopefully I can get a better tune out of him than that in the first season. A little bit disappointed with that. Jesse Lingard has had a decent impact. Seven goals, 32 appearances. Only one assist, but 7.14 average. So not a bad season from Jesse. Arthur Cabral has had a really good season, despite Brentford having a bit of a shock. He scored 18 Premier League goals and he's already disappearing. He's off for 29 million plus add-ons, so they've not made as maybe as much as what they could do. I think he's going to cost in there out. I suppose maybe 15 to 20 million might get him, so I suppose they've maybe doubled their money on that. Ben Bereton Diaz has not had the impact. I did think that when I saw his attributes, I thought, ooh, he's lacking a bit. I do think, though, if he, he got a move to the Premier League, I think he would be... Still pretty useful. Murucci has scored nine Premier League goals in 33 appearances. Not bad. I think that them nine goals have probably helped Burnley survive relegation this year. A nice little pickup. If you're playing a target man, I think there's a deal to be done for Vedat Murucci in your save. Jules Koundé, as expected. I thought there might be a little bit of rotation, but he's been a nearly ever present. 35 league appearances, one as subs, so 36 in all, 7.17 average, and with a 7.24 average rating altogether. 52 games, no doubt a fantastic signing for Chelsea. Aro Ambasaka has had a really good season as well. 37 appearances, three, assists, three goals, no assists, but three goals for Aro Ambasaka. Never going to happen in a million years. 7.2 average rating. I think a really good signing for Palace if they can get it pulled off. Ryan Nyambe has not been the signing that I was expecting. I thought he may have played more than that, especially with the lack of depth at right back for Everton. Yeah, maybe a mistake on my point for that, but I think he would be a decent pickup for them. In particular, with the budget that they are, the limited budget they're going to have at Everton, but only picking up, what, 15 appearances in all competitions. Oh, it gets worse. I would like to see this player at Manchester United in real life. Um, that's how much I like to watch him. He's asking prices 2.7 million. He's only played one game, nine as sub, an average rating of 6.2, and he's transfer listed. So, absolute shambles for me. Go and check him out on YouTube. If you've not heard of Seko Fafana, go check his little clips out on YouTube. Absolute baller. Sven Botman as well. Oh dear, this is this simulation is not going to plan. One start. One start in the Carabao Cup. Brilliant. Not one sub appearance. To be fair, he's rocked up a 7.2 average rating. 30 in by the looks of it with the under 23s. Look, if Leicester sign him this this January, he's gonna play what 15, 20 games, you would have thought. There we go. Frank Kessie has had a nice little impact. Only four goals. I would expect more than that. I think really he would be looking at double figures playing the full season at Liverpool. But four goals, four assists. I think Liverpool would be a little bit of a game changer for him because they're not going to strengthen at number nine. That's looks like that's not going to happen with them liking to use sort of like Jot and Firmino. But this is what they're missing. A number eight, a goal scoring number eight. This is the man. 
This is the man and he's available at a cut price deal as well. Luca Dina has not had the greatest of seasons. He's wanted by Barcelona. He's played 31 times, only one goal and only two assists. An average rating of 7.05, but that just shows him playing 31 games. Obviously, that's an area where City need to strengthen. My Manchester United pick has not gone well. He's transfer listed. He's wanted by Crystal Palace and West Ham. Brilliant. 16 appearances, sorry, six starts, 16 appearances sub, an average rating of 6.83. I think maybe, to be honest, his technicals are better than that. He's dribbling to 14, to be fair, first 14. He's not he's not terrible, but FM20, FM20, FM21 and FM22, absolutely love Paul Pogba. And with Pogba leaving, Haidara would be a nice little player to bring in at a relatively decent price. Newcastle finished ninth. Absolute signings, they've actually strengthened with Isaac, <laughs> Isaac in the winter as well. Love that, 60 million, here you go and have some of that. How did, I imagine Tarkowski has played pretty much every single game. Yeah, well, 27, 27, he's done well. I think it's a player that they'll probably try and get in January, I think. How's Beto done? My main man Beto, who's, who's not available, but I decided to put him there. Four goals. I think if he had that impact, for the, if there were his statistics for the second half of the season, 12, 12 starts, 8 as sub and scoring 4 goals, I think that would maybe help even a little bit. Sam Johnston's had a decent decent enough season. For, he's letting 44 goals, but we played the majority of the games. I think that's a, a, a nailed-on transfer, to be honest. I think if they can get him in, um, you know, with McCarthy being 32 and not great, Forster 37 as well and not great, I think getting an English goalkeeper... What, England's number three, getting him in at a really cheap deal is an absolute no-brainer for Southampton. Milenkovic has not had a great season at Spurs, only playing 20 times. I think they actually sacked Conte, you know. Yeah, and they've got Yoki Lowe in charge. Uh, that's a strange one because he's better than, maybe not better than Romero. Um, no, he's not better than Romero in the game. Um, but yeah, he should be playing more than what he does. How many Premier League appearances was it? 20. Four so he's only played half. Has he been injured? No. No, just bad management. No wonder you got sacked Conte. DME. Nathan Phillips has barely played. Brilliant. That's why Watford got relegated. West Ham finished 12th. How did he do? Bellotti did pretty well. 17. Played in 13 league goals. Maybe expecting more league goals. I think if they did sign him, he'd get a good maybe 10 goals in all competitions between now and the end of the season. Get him signed up, West Ham. And then the last one, Wolves. Portugal FC, where is he? Sanchez has done all right. 6.93 average. He's nearly at the, the sort of like the, the threshold of seven, which we all love to see. Goals three, assists one. Not great, but I think in real life he would be an amazing signing for Wolves. All right, boys. FM's not really done me justice there. I think I've set up 20 nice little transfers. Let me know down in the comments who you want your club to sign this January. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you later.